מייק יאדיק שואו, צ'יפה 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 בשעון פלנט, צ'יפה צ'יפה מייק יאדיק שואו, צ'יפה 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 בשעון פלנט, צ'יפה צ'יפה פאו וואו 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 And now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome your host for this podcast, Mr. Mike. Yeah, 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 woo, yeah, we love you, Mike. God damn. Bam. Episode number, which one? 16. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> How you doing, bro? I hope that you're having a great week. I hope that you're hustling and bustling and doing your push-ups and taking your vitamins. And today we have a very special episode. Oh, yeah, baby. Uh, bro, did you see fucking Tiger King? I mean, by the time this podcast, it comes out yeah, in two weeks, but I think it's still going to be relevant. But this show fucking took over the world pretty much. I'm not joking, man. You've probably seen it by this point. And in today's episode, I'm going to talk about, uh, do a bit of a review and just a recap of episode one. And I'm not sure if I'm going to review the whole series because, you know, it's a lot of spoiler alerts and stuff, obviously. So, uh, I don't know, we'll see. I, I want to see, you know, how the episode is going to turn out because I'm still thinking about it. But it doesn't matter. If you've seen the show, you know, you're going to enjoy this. If you haven't seen the show, there's going to be spoilers for episode one. I mean, episode one, it's a bit of an introduction, to be honest with you. So the whole series is seven episodes. So, yeah, but if you haven't seen it, I re- like, bro, you need to walk and watch it, man. After this thing, you know what I mean? It's insane. <laughs> and then I'm going to do, I have like a little, a little bit of a new segment that I'm working on, which is like, uh, just like daily uh, what's trending on a website called Lad Bible. They do like funny news and stories and I'll just go through it and comment on the stuff if there's something interesting. And then I'm going to tell you about how, you know, those pyramid schemes, multi-level marketing, how I got suspiciously almost involved in one of those things but i didn't know you know i was kind of duped into it so uh, it's gonna be a good episode and i'll try to keep this maybe one hour and 15 and hopefully i'll have time for everything but we'll see and i'll read a, a, a little bit of advertisements for my you know my social media and that type of stuff and i'm gonna be doing you know like slightly different formats from now on which is at the beginning of the podcast, I'm just going to summarize in a minute or two what, what I'm going to talk about for the rest of the podcast. I think this is going to be better. Anyway, anyway, anyway. So, uh, fuck it, hell, mate. Let me tell you what happened. So, maybe three weeks ago or something on my Facebook, all of a sudden, in the rec- recommendations, something popped up. Because I was looking at some Netflix specials, comedy or something on YouTube, like trailers. And I had this picture of, like tiger like this huge tiger and a guy with the most outrageous (laughs) the most ridiculous shirt ever you know what i mean something that i will probably eventually wear on stage one day because i'm not even joking man like because I, i i need to start dressing according to my stage persona because the way i dress a lot of people after gigs tell me when i first saw you come on stage or when i saw you in the venue i was not expecting to see the stuff that you did on stage because just the way you dressed because i dressed i was just like super conservative i wouldn't say conservative but just normal you know just like a shirt a jumper shoes you know like dress shoes and jeans you know, super kind of boring type stuff but my character is very very crazy and uh <laughs> and i see this guy and i was like oh my god so the shirt oh god hold on let me <laughs> i have notes by the way i took a lot of notes hold on fucking hell. i took a lot of notes for um for this thing hold on oh i have cables everywhere now fucking hell. oh shit I should have fixed this before i started it's okay um Tiger King trailer. I just need to open the picture. So, <laughs> so the shirt is like, uh, it's, 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 so it's a black shirt with these little, I don't know what the fuck it is, like glittery s- sequins. How's it called? I'm not sure. I've never seen anything like this before, honestly. Like, um, it's a mixture between like baby blue or like green turquoise, something like that, and silver, but it's super shiny. I mean, it's, bro, it's insane. And, you know, it's uh, very sunny outside. So, <laughs> so the shirt 
<laughs> the shirt is even more reflective. <laughs> It's amazing. And you have this guy. By the way, like, it's just a shirt and he's, like, bare chest <laughs> underneath. It's, like, open. Like, four buttons are open with a little, I think, like, a gold chain or something. And you have this guy with uh, bleached blonde hair with a mullet <laughs> and a mustache. Handlebar <laughs> mustache. And some sunglasses on his head. And it says Tiger King, Murder, Mayhem, and Madness. It's a two-minute official trailer of Netflix. And I clicked on it, and I was like, okay, what the fuck am I looking at? And uh, it was, like, insane, honestly. I'm going to go into details now on the first episode. I'm not going to ruin the trailer. But I saw it, and I was like, oh, I'm going to watch it. And um, then I think in the evening I went and I had no idea it was a seven episode series. I thought it was just like a documentary for an hour and I clicked on it. I don't know where the fuck did I found it. And it was like, but it turns out it was in the middle of the thing. And I watched like two minutes or something. And I was like, oh, I don't know. See, I have, to, I have work to do anyway. So I completely forgot about it. And slowly but surely the internet started picking up on it because I started seeing all these memes and all these discussions. This is maybe like three days after the thing came out. And I was like, ah, shit, you know. And maybe last week I uh, had some time. I finished my work during the day. And then the evening I was kind of bored. And I watched a lot of wrestling. I have like the wrestling channel and stuff here online. So I just watch wrestling all the time. And I was like, okay, let me... Okay, let's see what the fuss is about. And I actually found out the full series. And <laughs> I started watching it. And I was actually watching and doing like Instagram stories. Unfortunately, you know, they've expired now. So you cannot find them. But I have a clip, by the way, on my Instagram. At Mike Yannick. You can, you can follow me. I have a clip there of kind of something similar about Tiger King, like a little can a little clip, and uh, I started watching it, and I'm not joking, wait, 15 minutes in, I was like, hold on, I turned on my phone, and I started, you know, doing like the Instagram stories, and I was like, I'm 15 minutes into this, and this is the wildest shit I've ever seen in my life, it's, it's ridiculous, and then I watched, so it's seven series, so I watched episode one, two, and three, the first night, Four and five the second night, six and seven the third night, and I was doing the Instagram stories throughout. <laughs> I got obsessed, bro. Honestly, like this is the best shit ever. <laughs> so let me okay, because okay, let's talk about it now. Hold on. Um so let me see my notes here. Um Tiger King. Okay, so the backstory of this thing is, uh, so apparently, I've heard this before, but I, I wasn't sure that if it's true in America, and they said in Texas, even though everything is in Oklahoma, you, you, I'll tell you now. So apparently in America, there are more wild cats in captivity, you know, tigers, lions, pumas, jaguars, that type of stuff, than they are in the wild. And I was like, well, because I think tigers, there's like five thousand tigers or something in Africa I'm not sure or in the world and I was like fucking you know what I mean like but when you think about it maybe it's true because like um one of the guys you know the main guy which I will get into detail in a few minutes and Jesus Christ oh my god he said that he had around 230 cats uh, but you know he was breeding them so obviously the numbers always fluctuates so only him, he has 300, you know, it's a private zoo or whatever. Uh, so, conservation camp, I think they call it. So, I wouldn't be surprised. And it pretty much, um, the thing starts off from the story is told by the, uh, was it like a producer, a video producer, uh, who actually shot a lot of videos and a lot of, like, and a lot of footage for the documentary. So it starts off with him being in a bar and just retelling the story. And pretty much the main character of this thing is a go guy called, ah, I forgot to put his real name, Joseph Mausedano, Bosedano or something like that. Um, but he goes by the name of Joe Exotic. <laughs> Because, because, fuck it, why not? Oh, and he, bro, he looks like a character out of a, 
Like if you have a combination between like the craziest novel that you can think of, like somebody drugged up author created a novel, if you mix that with like a GTI Grand Theft Auto random customization of a character from I don't know 2005 and mix in like I don't know like a rap video or something because you know his lifestyle was so preposterous fucking tigers and like you know what I mean gold chains and pistols and you know what I mean like what the fuck and uh, so he looks hold on I need to <laughs> go Joey hold on Joey <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing too much, but it's just so fresh in my... So he looks like... You know David Spade? He he did a movie back in the day. I've seen that movie called Joe Dirt. <laughs> he played this redneck with a mallet. So if Joe Dirt was hooked on, like, meth and fucking... Oh, so it was a breed between, like, Joe, Mal- uh, Joe Dirt... Um, yeah, so he looks like Joe Dirt and he has the like the stage presence, quote unquote, and flamboyantness of uh what was those two guys who pet the tigers in America? Very famous duo, they got eaten by tigers and shit. Uh Z- Zigfried and Roy. Was that them? Hold on. Zig Fried. Was that oh, no, that's not them. Hold on, what am I saying? Hold on. What's the name of those guys? I'm so fucking stupid, man. Sinkfield and Roy. Was that them? No, what's the name? That's not them. Sinkfield and Roy, German-American duo of... Oh, yeah, that's them. Here we go. Yay. I'm not that stupid after all. Yeah, so Siegfried and Roy. So for those of you who don't know, back in the day in America, especially if you're like 19 or 20 listening to this, you probably don't know, but back in the day, there was this duo of this, I think they were husbands or lovers or something, like this gay duo, and they used to do shows in like Vegas and stuff, and they, um, just with tigers and lions and cats, and they were like tiger tamers, and it was a mixture between um, like circus, cabaret, uh, one-man show, that type of stuff, you know, like zoo, very flamboyant, they wear crazy outfits, and I mean like ridiculous outfits, and the whole antics, and they all bleached blonde, and they all look perfect, and you know what I mean, that type of stuff, let me look here, and uh, so he looks Joey, our boy, let me google back Joey, uh, he looks like a combination, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, so he looks like Joe Dirt, uh, after a makeover, Combine the stage presence and flamboyantness of Zeke Friedenroyd, and he says the stuff that Donald Trump says, you know what I mean? Like some crazy outlandish shit. And you're thinking, like, hold on, what? You know what I mean? Is that a real person? What the fuck's happening? So, pretty much, like, he's insane. He is so entertaining. It's unbelievable. So, he is bleached blonde, like I said, with a mullet. He has a uh, uh, a lot of piercings. He's an old man, by the way. I think he's in his 60s now. And this documentary was filmed uh, four or five years ago. I mean, it's a long span of years and all the madness and chaos. But, you know, it's like he's been, he was in his 50s something. Uh, piercing on his eyebrow. Uh, pier- four piercings on one year. Um, he wears the, the these shirts which are like insane because so he lives in Oklahoma so Oklahoma as long as I know it used to be I think because the state flag of Oklahoma is like Native American symbolism I'm not I'm not sure they have the feathers and the other stuff so I think isn't I think they have like a reservation or something there you know like Native Americans so because in America they have a few states which are you know like Indian land I mean technically all of America's Indian land, as long as I know, but, you know what I mean, they, they still have, because New Mexico as well, they have some symbolism in their flag as well, so the way he dresses is is very interesting, because he combines a few styles, uh, dress, dress up, yeah, because he combines, like, a few styles of, like, uh, obviously the rock and roll, hold on, what the fuck is this shit, oh my god, I typed in, 
Joe Exotic dress up and there's all these Halloween costumes and kids dressing up as Joe Exotic. Oh my god. Uh, I don't want to see that. I want to see his outfits, bro. Hold on. We need to talk about his outfits. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'll be able to fit in the multi level marketing scheme the way I'm going. I haven't even started talking about the actual episode. So he dresses. You know, with the flamboyant shirts, but then he he always wears a hat, either a truck. So he wears a trucker hat when he's working on the farm, and when he's doing his public appearances, he usually wears like cowboy hats and stuff like that. And he wears um a lot of you know like leopard prints, and he wears like these rock and roll clothing, you know, like uh rock and roll clothing like jackets and maybe like jeans and stuff but he combines them with like cowboy boots and a lot of like native american symbolism he has like these necklaces uh that are very traditional i think he wears like crazy flamboyant shirts like ridiculous shirts you know like all white shirt with like these embroideries of like maybe like flowers and fucking crosses and like huge i don't know ego on the back and it's just insane or like these bright pink shirts and bright blue shirts and always you know the cowboy hat a lot of accessories like shit loads of accessories like way too many oh he is he's so funny he has a knee brace and like a little cane that he walks you know it makes him look so distinctive by the way and he's i think he's tall he's like six two or something so if you see him there is no way that you're not going to recognize him he is crazy 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 distinctive such a character like i cannot believe that that's a real person honestly and uh i'm so happy that this uh show bring him to life because the whole world needs to learn about the glory of joe exotic (laughs) so we have joe exotic he is the owner of the gw zoo that is based in oklahoma um and it's off the side of the road pretty much it's not in a big city it's not like a zoo zoo you know what i mean and he's st- he's been doing it i don't know for 15 years or something he said and he started off with a little shed just like he said he had like a cup bear or something like that and he managed to develop all of those things and now he has over 227 wild cats and he said he had i think a few hundred other animals but the place is massive and it's honestly looked okay it looked good you know what i mean i don't know how much money he has and how much money i don't think he has sponsors or donors and stuff like that i mean at least in episode one you didn't know that i mean when the story develops you know it gets fucking bro it gets fucking weird and insane but it looked okay and but i was thinking the whole time isn't that illegal like isn't owning cats and tigers like for you're not allowed are you i mean he was breeding them and selling them as well but i think because in america the state laws are very different in america each state is like its own little country and the only thing that combines them and governs them is the constitution but pretty much they're all separate um which is very interesting you have like in one state you have I think you have a state where abortion is illegal. The next state is legal. You have a state where they're super strict about weed. The next state is like, yeah, we don't, we don't care. So it's 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 super different, man. It's like going to different countries, you know. And uh, I think in Oklahoma, maybe it's they have a loophole. I'm sure they. Ha- I don't want to Google it now because I'll get too off track. But I'm sure they have some sort of a loophole where it's maybe if you it's like a conser- it falls under cons- conservation or something. You know what I mean? But I'm not sure, but he, and you know, he was on camera and shit, so it wasn't like, you know, pro- uh, secret, you know what I mean? And he got people going to the park all the time. You pay a price, it's like going to the zoo, and then you get to pet a baby tiger, take a picture, watch Joe Exotic see, sing some songs to you, all that type of shit, innit? Okay, so, we have him, so we have, um... So pretty much he had like a little tour. I'm not going to tell you scene by scene what's happening. You know, obviously I'm just going to summarize all the nonsense I saw in this thing. And he has like a little, you know, it's a little zoo. Uh, I mean, he goes through the zoo and they they give him like how he's playing with the monkeys, with the tigers, you know. he <clears throat> Sorry, they make him look very, uh, very likable, to be honest with you. Uh, at the beginning, most of the characters except one is actually quite 
they present them as likable, but when the story evolves, you can understand that everybody's batshit crazy and they're so manipulative and so they're just exploiting people, just comebacks and just exploiting animals as well. But it's to be honest with you, when I finished this series, I throughout the series I experienced every human emotional emotion possible. I'm not even joking. And the thing is so wild that you you, you become really happy one second, the next second you're like really all oh my god, what the fuck? And then you feel sorry for a person, then you're like, Oh, this fucking bastard's like is insane, man. This is probably the best documentary series I've ever seen. I'm not even joking. And, and I watch a lot of documentaries and shit, you know. So we have okay, so we have three camps. Okay, you need to know that they are in the in this story. There are uh different three different camps that uh parks that raise and uh, you know wild cats. So I'll just tell you the name. So the first one is Joe Exotic, which is the GW Zoo. Then you have uh, then you have Carol Baskins. She is the big cat rescue, and I'm gonna go to her in a few seconds. And then you have Bhagavan Doc Anto. He has the Myrtle Beach Safari. So pretty much the story is about the beef, you know, between Joe Exotic GW Zoo and Carol Baskins, big cat rescue. That is the whole story between the hatred between those two and uh, and doc and though he pretty much is just you know he takes a part in the in the thing but he's based in north carolina and he's just like a side commentator and he's explaining how the industry works and because he knows both of them and he explains the whole story between them but he's a shady guy as well to be honest he's fucking weird and carol baskin big cat rescue they're based in tampa florida Okay, so, but the whole story, the Tiger King is Joe Exotic, so it's mostly about Joe, even though, you know, you have a lot of side stories as well, Uh, and thank God it's about Joe, this guy's fucking insane. So you have, uh, they have a few, they introduce a few of the employees in episode one, even though there are more and more characters uh, as the show progresses, and you have, uh, you have John... Um, no, Eric Co- Coe is the first one, he's like, a, he was one of the employees, he's like this very weird, he's very tall, he's like six foot something, long blonde hair, he, he has like this vibe, if you combine a homeless guy with a surfer, <laughs> That's what you get. And a little sprinkle, a little layer of Mad Max on top of it. Because he always wore his sunglasses and a few teeth were missing. (laughs) And he always, like, he kind of, the way he sat on the chair was very interesting. He kind of leaned forward always. And he was, like, very like, yeah, man, fuck this shit. (laughs) They asked him, how did you get the job? He's like, man, never done this before. Open Craigslist one day, so that they're looking for a guy to feed and play with some tigers. And I was like, shit, man, never done this before. Let's give it a go. Yeah, man, let's go. You know? <laughs> That's the whole vibe of the guy, you know? <laughs> He's so funny. I love him. He's so funny. Um, and, you know, when they, they asked him about somebody's women or girlfriends or whatever, he was like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> And it's like a meme now. Uh, so he's a funny guy. Um, then we have John Rain K. He's a manager. Uh, so this guy, he o- he's also telling the story. He's been there for a few years and he knows he knows uh, Joe Exotic very well. Because they have like a YouTube show, which I'm going to go in a few seconds. And he's the co-host of the show as well. Uh, so... <laughs> so um, This zoo, by the way, is absolutely insane and very dangerous, these animals, because uh, you have, then you have um, Kelsey Shaferi, nicknamed Saf, she lost one of her arms to, she was, it was bitten off by a tiger, and actually they have, I think they have footage because, you know, the camera crew was there. And Joe, I don't know why, but... And, you know, he, he liked the attention and stuff. But he documented almost everything. That's why the documentary is so long. And there is no recreatement. You know what I mean? That's the good thing about modern day documentaries. Because everybody records everything. 
so now when they talk something when they tell the story about how she got her arm bit off or whatever they show the actual footage because joe is a maniac so he records almost 24 7 what's happening or when they do oh we used to do the tiger shows this way and they don't do a recreation or show a picture in somebody voiceover for four minutes which is kind of stupid i mean it's not that interesting they actually show the footage because you know this guy's a maniac and that is really good now with modern day when they talk about modern day stories i've seen some documentaries about like murders and some other stuff that happened maybe in a few like three four years ago and there's so much footage from social media people's phones police reports whatever and they can do a good documentary because you know when i watch documentaries about history i mean obviously there's no way to capture that on video about 500 years ago but you know what i mean it's just a drawing of a guy and it's somebody talking for four minutes and um so she got her arm bit off, she spent the week in hospital, and then she came back to work, which is insane. And she, it was almost near the the elbow, you know what I mean, like proper, it's not like, oh, she got like two fingers bit off, you know. And she came back and they show her working with one, one arm with a puma or something and they need to, no, it was like an animal. And it was very dangerous and she was trying with a, with a net, with a huge net or something to keep it in place. It was, it was crazy. She was, she was almost dropping the net because she doesn't have a fucking arm. You know what I mean? How fucking insane. These people are crazy, by the way. All of them. And uh, they almost don't get paid anything, which is bizarre. They they sleep there. They have, like, caravans. And uh, they get paid, like, 100 bucks a week or something, which is insane. They work 14 hours a day. I don't know. And these people are fucking insane. But I was thinking... It's probably so boring in Oklahoma because I, I was checking the map. I know they have is Oklahoma City, which is a big city, but that's it. There's nothing else in the state, you know what I mean? And it's tornado state. I think they have a lot of tornadoes and stuff. And I was thinking, like, if you live in the middle of fucking nowhere, I'm not joking, like these small, small, small towns, you know, like roadside towns that there's nothing happening. And I'll sign up, you know what I mean? If I don't have any plans to move because... Oklahoma borders with Texas if you don't plan to move to Texas you know for like something big city or you know what I mean if you're like man I'm just gonna stay here man fuck this shit <laughs> I don't know if people in Oklahoma speak like that it'd be funny if I get because I get the analytics now but it'd be funny if I had but I have some listeners from America now which is very interesting because I haven't done any um advertisement for, for this podcast what i want to do is when i start doing the video podcast to do maybe five or six video podcasts as well and then start to properly pay because you need to advertise this properly i haven't i just posted there but i saw it starting to get a bit of traction some views from america which is very interesting and uh how did the america goddamn <laughs> you're listening to me <laughs> i love you and uh I don't know how you hear about this podcast. And I get a lot of friend, friend requests from Canadians as well. And Americans as well. I don't know how they found my videos. But it doesn't matter. What I'm trying to say is I don't know if people from Oklahoma listen to that. But if people from Oklahoma ever hear this episode, text me. I'm interesting. Is there anything to do over there? Like Because I hear when people talk, when I hear stand-up comedians and like late night talk shows, they, all, they always make fun of your state, which... <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of bad i don't like it you know but is is it true is there is there like fucking nothing and just tornadoes and cows and shit and i don't know and uh but i'll be like yeah i'll fucking work there man why, why not just look at a fucking joe exotic crazy fa face all day get some because they have a lot of traffic of people visiting the park and you know you know risk your life almost every day get a bit of an edge a buzz you know do some drugs smoke some smoke some cigarettes you know drink some beer or whatever the hell they do over there in that park you know so why not and uh, she said she was pretty much off the street as well she was like oh i've never done this before and then i want to go back to uh eric no was it eric uh yeah john john rainy rain Ra because he doesn't have legs. That's the thing. So he has these bio legs or whatever. You know that guy Oscar Pistorius or whatever. When when you like plug them in and you can walk. And uh, but when they show that uh, what was the name Saf lost her arm, they switch back to him and he said, "Oh yeah, my legs. I um, I lost them in a zip lining accident." 
And I was thinking like, yeah, mate, who the fuck are you trying to fool? You know what I mean? Like this park is so fucking crazy. Joe, you know, got his, he's in a knee brace because of uh, <laughs> um, Tiger attacked him. The other lady lost his arm and you, yeah, he, you've been working for 10, 15 years here. And you've lost in a zip lining accident. Give me a fucking break. So yeah, his uh, legs are probably eaten by a tiger or crocodile or some shit like that. Then we have... But he's a very cool guy. And they're all super chilled out. Like in a weird way. You know what I mean? They're all... Either they're all on something. Or they just like... Because they know that they can... Lose their life every day. Because it's a very risky job it's not a joke man because they have this thing where they they go inside the cages with the tigers they feed them they have uh and, and i'm not talking the babies the babies are harmless you know like a, like a baby tiger like if four weeks old it can do nothing to you it's like a cat you know what i mean a cat can hurt you more but these tigers they said in one it takes them one year to become a full size fucking 300 400 pound monsters so you know what i mean they grow very fast and uh, they go, oh my god, scary, bro. You go into a cage with seven tigers, you know what I mean? And they feed them and they pet them. And when they have the guests over, you know, like the customers, they do like play sessions, they do little shows. And Joe is all there talking shit and petting and hugging the tigers. And he's talking the tigers, they're just around him, you know what I mean? So they're risking their life every day, which is insane for, for no fucking money. You need to be really obsessed with big cats to do that type of shit. Um, but it definitely opened my eyes about, I've, I've seen documentaries, I like big cats and stuff, and, oh, I'll tell you, I, I saw a tiger, actually, in person, this was the only time I've ever seen a tiger up close, it was, uh, in 2015, I think, yeah, 2015, so I was back in Bulgaria, and uh, I stopped visiting Bulgaria, to be honest with you, for a while now, especially now with these situations and stuff. And, you know, we had Brexit, so I'm going to apply. I'm planning to apply, apply for British citizens uh, citizenship at the end of the year when I get a bit more money. And uh, after I get my passport, then I'm going to do some traveling. And um, so I was there in 2015, and I was in the capital, Sofia. So I was... Uh, so I'm from Plovdiv, which is the second biggest city and I love my city, like, and even when I was in Bulgaria, I left when I was 21, for those of you who don't know, I, um, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm weird, I don't like to travel, so I pretty much spend most of my life in my city, I've been out to other cities, but I've never relocated, and I've never spent more than a, maybe like a week at the seaside, and I used to go to my grandparents' house, which is like a really lovely village in the, the, the mountainside, uh, I actually wrote a book about it. I wrote a comedy novel called Five Days of Cine Scenery. It's on Amazon. You can find it for like five quid or something. <laughs> I'm doing a bit of plug now. I am reading that, bro. What can I do? And uh, yeah, it's it's a fun book. I really enjoyed it. And I was in Sofia for maybe like a few weeks just visiting some people. And uh, I was like, you know, what? let's go to the zoo. And I have very mixed feelings about zoos because I love... I'm very interested in animals. I find them fascinating, and I like to, um, I like to observe them. I like to observe their movements and how they walk and how to behave. And they, I don't know, they inspire me a lot. You know what I mean? Uh, they, they get me, they, they get my creativity going when I see like wild animals. And I just watch documentaries. I'm not, you know what I mean? I haven't traveled. I haven't been to fucking safaris. And I've been to the zoo maybe like two times or something in my life. And in Sofia, they have the really big zoo. And, um, and, and it's massive, by the way. It's so big, but it used to be like a park. You know, like a big, big, big park back in the day. But they've turned it into a zoo. But the thing is, you have a cage with a bear. And the next cage, sometimes you need to walk like four minutes. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that type of... It's massive. And uh, and you can see it was a park. So where is the... You know, you have the aisles. And where is the green part? They just... Just put a fucking... You know what I mean? Just, bleh, just put a cage there. So it was weird. But they had this thing where they had the wild cats and we saw a tiger and uh, it was, the good thing is it was indoors so they had all the, t and it was during the summer so, no it was in September and it was, uh, was it 2015? Hold on, no it was not 2000, oh 2016, 
Fuck it. Now hold on. I was back 2015. That doesn't matter. I think it was 2016. Who gives a fuck? It's not like anybody keeping track of this shit. Oh no, Mike, you lied to me. You goddamn bastard. I told it was 2015. Goddamn. No, uh, doesn't matter. I think it was 2016. And uh, so we went there and. Uh, Oh my god, mate, I saw a tiger up close, and it was really close, so it was like the cage, and you can see anything, everything, because it was like those display cages, it wasn't those where you're, you know, like you're really back, and they're down, down, down at the little cave or whatever, no, no, it was like, you had that from the other side, but this was from inside, so where is the little cave where they sleep, you see that. And we were fortunate because the tiger was inside because it was very sunny and warm. So he was inside, you know, the shade and stuff. And he was right next to the to the cage. And um, there was a li little distance. And I'm just looking at him the way you look at the aquarium when you go to those stuff. And that thing was so fucking scary, mate. I, like, legit, I was legit scared. And even though, you know, it's not gonna hurt you because, you know, you have all that protection between you two. It just it was just pacing and it looked so fucking angry, mate. Honestly, oh my god. It was just pacing back and forth. And when he was pacing, you can boom. You know what I mean? I don't know if the microphone catches this, but it was just like boom, boom, boom. And it was just I I everything was shaking inside of me. You know what I mean? I was I was legit scared. And it was just looking at me. And it was just pacing like a fucking prisoner. And it was just thinking like, oh, if I get <laughs> if I get out of here, motherfucker, you're mince meat. You know what I mean? And you have little stupid kids and stuff like, oh my god, mommy, look at the tag, look at the tag, a picture with me, take a picture. You know, they're pointing at him and laughing. They don't know what the fuck's I'm just standing there like, oh, I'm shitting my pants. You know what I mean? And it was so intimidating, mate. It was fucking insane. And then I think they were, we saw maybe like a lynx and a jaguar or something. But they were much smaller. But the tiger was massive. And we saw a lion and a lioness, I think, as well. The lioness were more a beat. The lions were very lazy, to be honest with you. They were just like laying and licking their bows. Lioness were just, yeah, back and forth. But, oh, man, I like these things can kill you in a snap you know what i mean they're so fucking big they're so fucking fast agile it's insane and i was thinking can you imagine if we had tigers because you know they're i think they're extinct now and they're very you know rare but i was thinking can you imagine you know in big cities we don't have actually uh street dogs in the uk uh, I don't know what they do here, but back in Bulgaria, we used to have, back in the day, in the 90s, a lot of street dogs, just everywhere, you know what I mean, just how it is, just street dogs everywhere, and cats as well. Can you imagine if in 2020, you had, instead of street dogs and street cats, you had lions, tigers, pumas, just running around the streets, just fucking everywhere, you know what I mean, and they have their little, you know, places, and they, they make babies, and... Uh, fucking crazy man it would be insane obviously you know the government is gonna do something about it but if they were coming that's what i'm trying to say it, it'll be the scariest shit ever man i'll, I'll be fucking shitting my pants if there's tigers around you know what i mean it's scary man animals like that are fucking scary and you know i'm you know i'm you know i'm in europe you know i've been i was born here i lived all my life i haven't traveled anywhere and we don't have stuff like that here you know what i mean but i'm sure that if you live i think in bangladesh they have you know the bengali tigers and in africa they have the you know a lot of wildlife and stuff and uh, you know we have bears here but it's not the same but it's fucking scary man like just having that thing around you and um i was terrified so i have no idea how these people do it in those wild zoos i don't have that courage honestly like i have different type of courage i can go on stage in front of 200 people and just make a buffoon out of myself and talk shit and not care what anybody thinks i'm very courageous in that way but working around tigers i don't even want to because they had like petting sessions and you can see big tigers and stuff and going the cage i think and i was like no fuck that man i don't like yeah i'll pet a baby tiger but that's about it um so they had hold on okay so we had um so we have Joe and he's do doing all the stuff. Now you have uh, so a bit of background about Joe. So um, he, you know, he's a gay man, which nothing wrong with that. You know, I hope that he's happy. But the thing that made me 
go, okay, wow, this guy got some game. Uh, so he had, you know, multiple. I think currently, before he went to jail, he had five boyfriends or something. But <laughs> And that's not the funny part. The funny part is that some of them are straight and he convinced him, he convinced them to be his boyfriends. And I just looked at that and I was like, wow. You know what I mean? Like, can you imagine how much game you need to have? Like, bro, I... Like, I've been single for fucking ages. Like, I cannot convince a girl <laughs> to be my girl. Like, you know what I mean? The most I can do is just shag somebody by, you know what I mean? If they're having a bad day and they're, like, super desperate and I'm just at the right place at the right time, that's the most I can do. But there's no way I can convince a woman to have a loving, long-term relationship with me. And this fucking guy convinced two straight guys... He got married, you know, to, uh, so there was a tr- married threesome. I didn't even know that you can marry, like, hold on, like, <clears throat> I know they made gay marriage legal in America, but hold on, isn't, what was it, polygamy? So, yeah, polygamy, isn't that illegal? Like, <laughs> how does it work? I mean, for a relationship, you can do whatever, but getting married, you can't get married to two people at the same time. And he did, they got married, three of them, they wear, like, the same outfits and stuff. And I was like, man, this fucking guy has some game. Oh, actually, that's a bit of a spoiler. I think it's in episode two, I think, that thing. But it doesn't matter. I'm I'm probably just going to do episode one. So, (laughs) But I was like, fucking hell, this guy got some game, bro. It's insane. So they, they, uh, his first husband, his name is John Finley. He looks, there were so many memes. Okay, I'm I'm, going to tell this. So batista from wwe is like a pro wrestler for back back in the day he's just like a you know shaved head very you know muscular a huge guy you know um piercings and stuff and this guy he looks like the budget version of him he shaved head like these weird um <laughs> weird uh, piercings tattoos really bad tattoos by the way just proper shit tattoos and because he smoked a lot of meth amphetamine and one of the side effects of meth is like your teeth fall out and he literally had four teeth <laughs> oh i'm sorry that i'm laughing but it's just so funny like you know what i mean drug addiction is never funny you know i don't i <laughs> but come on bro <laughs> jesus man but hey he fixed them you know i looked at the what is it like a lot bible or something news whatever the fuck recently and he fixed the yeah, johnny boy and he looks actually nice i think he's a sweet boy and he's gay and he's been in a gay relationship for 11 years and i was thinking like fucking hell joe exotic man he has a lot of game hey listen joe exotic is a bit charming but he's not like hey mate he's not my type you know what i mean if i was out the guys he's definitely not my type and um yeah i'm, I'm not a big fan of crazy people who blow shit up and smoke meth and fucking threaten other people with murder and <laughs> all that type of insanity and um so they've been together for 11 years and he has tattoos he has a tattoo which which really disturbed uh, disturbed me oh my god above his uh, below his belly button there's a tattoo that says um pro owned by joe exotic but the first word i couldn't read it because the tattoo is so shit like he showed it but and he has so much hair by the way and with these tattoos it doesn't look good when you have a lot of hair in these tattoos but i think it's like properly or property or something like that but that was disturbing like whenever i see i know it's like a fetish stuff and stuff but man when you start getting t- t- sexualized tattoos like that bro what are you doing like fucking hell man like no 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 fuck that and i didn't like that because you know that was probably joe's idea and and you know there was some manipulation going on there and i i don't like when people play games with other people like that and especially when you get tattoos and stuff nah fuck that but hey we still like joe you know what i mean he's a complex character what can i say and (laughs) so okay let's finish with the gw zoo and then i'm gonna talk about the other two camps (coughs) Because I'm not following the story, you know, frame by frame. It's because, you know, I'm going to completely ruin the show for you. And uh, so, Joe Exotic, he has, like, this huge facility. Uh, if you, it costs a few hundred pounds to go go into the zoo and visit and day, day trip or whatever. Which is fair enough because at the end of the day, I mean, you need to... 
look, I'm not defending them. I don't know if it's legal to have cats. But if you do have them, you need to feed them somehow. And you need to keep the facility. You know what I mean? You need to clean. You need to have staff members. You need to pay, like, rent, some sort of tax. I'm sure that they have property tax or whatever in America. You need to pay for, like, the signs, the advertisements, where people are going to live. Because they, they, I think they have, like, 15, 20, 30 people staff. All that stuff takes money. You know what I mean? So... Of course, it's going. It's not going to be. The zoo is twenty quid, I think, here in Chester, twenty five pounds. So yeah, of course, it's going to be a few hundred pounds. Yeah, uh, doors, you know. So fair enough. I'm. I'm not objecting to that. You know what I mean? Um, and they had a gift shop. So uh, of course you do. And when you go inside, it's the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen. Oh my God, this guy is so crazy, man. I love him, and. Uh, I'm going to borrow borrow some of his outfits, ideas, and I'm going to wear them to stage. I'm not even joking, mate. Like, because after this uh, pause, I'm going to reinvent my character on stage. And I was thinking about this for a long time, but I didn't know how to introduce it. Because when I just show up in front of the other comedians and the audience, because they know me, especially the comedy circuit. A lot of people know me and they'll be like, what? Because, you know, what is this? But now I'll be like, fuck it, I'm going full Joe Exotic up in this motherfucker. I don't give a shit, and um, so he had everything imaginable as a product, just slapped the name, either Joe Exotic or a picture of his face, or both in some cases, he had um, everything, hats, uh, fucking necklaces, t-shirts, hoodies, you know, the standard stuff, then he had candles, he had uh, sex gels, moisturizers hand moisture tiger king hand moisturizer um he had uh, lubricants he had condoms okay like the <laughs> it's like a fucking sex shop <laughs> he had joe exotic <laughs> condoms and it's pretty much just a standard condom and with his face on it you know what i mean like the packaging is his crazy face <laughs> Oh my god, this guy is crazy. And he said the best number one seller is the Joe Exotic underwear, which is surprisingly big range. Like, you know what I mean? To When it comes to sizes and designs of all animal prints with the name Joe Exotic, you know, on the strap or whatever. And a lot of them, there was like a whole wall, probably 30 or 40 designs, which I was very surprised. Like... Say whatever you want about this guy, but he knows how to market and how to create. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, that's a legit line that he has. And by the way, I think the zoo, unfortunately, I'm going to spoil a lot of it. But unfortunately, it's under different management now. And I think probably the Joe Exotic branding is taken down. But I was thinking, do you know if this guy, because, you know, he's not free anymore. Uh, you probably know this by now, but if he was free and if he was still in that zoo, do you know that this guy will be the next, at least for the next few months? Because I don't know how long his fame is going to last, but he is going to be the next, I don't know, like Kim Kardashian or whatever. You know what I mean? When it comes to social media sensationalism type of stuff, he will be a crazy celebrity you know what i mean people will flock because you know the documentary has a very dark turn and you know now people are very divided and pretty much nobody comes out looking good everybody's a scumbag in this thing but this thing will be insane and people are profiting a lot by the way from uh from him now from like his whole joe exotic thing and i don't think he can trade market but everything just started popping out you know but i think uh you know if uh people if they're gonna use his name and stuff at least donate some of the money to maybe like legit conservation uh people because i'm sure there's organizations who work on that and conservation and research and funding and all that stuff for wild animals and wild cats i think you could do that or you know what i mean the companies because they're so big companies like you know what i mean using their his name or the brand or the the fame of the documentary or pictures and just selling merch and i think you should do something like that. but hey who the fuck i am i don't know what i'm talking about just a comedian so hold on and then he showed us that 
um, he showed an interview or that he was featured on the cover of a Hollywood Hollywood Weekly magazine twice, which was quite an accomplishment, to be honest with you. I mean, don't forget that this guy started from fucking zero and he wants to be famous so fucking bad. Oh, my God. And that's why I love him, because, like, I kind of I kind of understand because all the stunts and all the craziness, it is his personality, but he makes such a he's like a train wreck and like a car crash that you cannot look look away. You know what I mean? You just keep looking and watching and you're like, oh, my God, this is this is unreal. And we need characters like that in life i've always said that many times whenever you see somebody being really crazy or really provocative or really insane or dress dresses flash or whatever and i was like oh have a unusual lifestyle and i was like we need to have people like there they should be mandatory to this world because can you imagine if everybody was like you know, with a button up and just going nine to five and I go home on the weekend and I shag my wife in the vagina once a week. <laughs> and I watch television on the, you know, from uh, eight o'clock to ten o'clock and I have dinner and I go to bed and I'm an accountant and I drive my Mitsubishi car. I don't, even, I don't know anything about car. I drive my Mitsubishi car and I have two kids and I'm... You know, just your average Joe. You know what I mean? Can you imagine if the whole world, like, everybody was like that? Can you imagine how much of a dull place, like, this thing will be? You know what I mean? Like, you need those insane people. Obviously, you know, they're gonna have a crazy life, which might end up them serving 30 years in jail or something. But, you know, <laughs> it's entertaining. And, no, you need, honestly, like, this is how art is created this is how um influence not, not influence but fucking the creative juices are flowing this is how muses because you never know joe exotic might be somebody's muse to create the next great movie next great music poetry stand up whatever it is so you need insane characters like him but but when they become too many then it doesn't it's not good you know what i mean because then everybody tries to be different and everybody tries to be unique and oh i'm crazy and you know what i mean you need to have some sort of talent for this shit and he's very talented at being crazy and being a hot mess to be honest with you and um so then joey boy shows us the magazines and then he shows us the two music albums he has because yes of course he fucking creates writes sings and creates music video. Of course he's a musician mate. That's fucking Joe Exotic. You know what I'm saying. So he has the two albums. He said that he has 28 songs. So 14 songs in each album. And 16 music videos. And hold on Mike. Are those music videos available somewhere that we can watch them? Well yes of course they fucking are. Because the best part of this whole insanity is... Joe Exotic, even though he's an old, old fella who is absolutely out of his mind, he's surprisingly well educated on social media. And he's been on YouTube. Oh, yes, Joe Exotic has a YouTube account that has almost 180,000 uh, followers now, subscribers, which was funny because when I checked, um, I checked when the trailer dropped and i saw that he does music in the video and i went to youtube and i found so it's called joe exotic tv because yeah of course it is and uh he had maybe like 4k or 5k or something this is when it just dropped so pretty much in the span of 10 days because everybody went and subscribed and now joe is in jail so there's no new content i mean they have some videos like montages and videos of animals but not not of him and the last one was like a few years ago and um, there is an extensive, and I mean extensive, catalog of Joe's work from uh, music videos, highly produced music videos, which are surprisingly good. The music is really good. But then I found out that, you know, it was not him singing. So I was kind of disappointed, to be honest with you. Uh, it was somebody else singing. And uh, the music is very good. And um, he has shows like daily shows in front of a green screen cameras like the whole shebang you know what i mean and he has these montages of uh you know the animals he has vlogs what's happening oh we're fixing this cage and we're doing this and say hello jimmy or whatever the fuck 
it's I got into a rabbit hole I'm not gonna lie to you like a few nights ago and I was like man I need to go to bed otherwise I'm gonna stay here all night it's insane there's so much stuff and thank you Joe for know how to do YouTube because uh, that is the good thing of the modern day stuff like I said everything is fucking recorded there's a video of everything and this guy is an absolute maniac and you know it's not like a uh, like a character that he's playing in the documentary because I think this is just how he is 24-7 and um, so we did the videos yeah okay so we have John Kim, John Finley okay so I talked about all the yeah so I talked about all the characters that are introduced from Joe's zoo so far I'm gonna talk about Carol uh, oh yeah like I said the music is fire I'm not even joking um so, the main villain in this thing is Carol Baskins, or how Joe calls her, that bitch down in Florida, Carol Baskins. Um, so, she has this thing called Big Cat Rescue. I'm not going to go into too much detail about her, because they just hinder a few things about her, you know what I mean? And uh, I want you to watch the full show and watch the rest of it, and you can find what's happening. Um, or maybe I'll do more episodes in the future, we'll see, depends how it goes, um, so, she is this, she is the equivalent of the crazy cat lady, to be honest with you, she is obsessed since a child, and I feel kind of sorry for her, because she said when she was young, she didn't have any friends, but she had two imaginary cats as friends, and I was like, hold on, who the fuck has imaginary pets as friends, you usually have imaginary friends that are people, and then she said that, you know, whenever she was a kid, then when she grew up, she always, they had a cat and all the pictures were with cats and that's how she fell in love with them. And uh, they showed around her house, which was absolutely insane. Everything was a cat print. And I mean everything. No, hold on, Mike. Are you really meaning that everything in this cat lady's house was a cat print? Yes, everything. Like, from the fucking floor to the fucking wallpapers, cups, dishes, uh, everything she wore, everything in her closet was a cat print. Her luggage was a cat print. She had statues of cats. She had fucking um, picture frames were cats, little models, uh, vase, vases, everything you can imagine, paintings of cats, cat prints. And she said, I'm actually allergic to cats. And I was like, what? And that's why everything is in her, you know. And I was like, what the fuck, man? And by the way, cat prints, wearing cat prints is the most tackiest, the most, like, trashy thing ever. I'm not even joking. Like, when I saw, when I see a woman wearing a cat print, like, especially like a leotard, like, you know what I mean? Or like a fucking top and like... The more cat print she has on her, the fucking crazier that bitch is. That is the rule, okay? I'm not making the rule, I'm just the messenger. I even have a joke in my set. If I see a woman on the first row wearing a cat print, I'm not gonna give you the joke, but I have a little joke that I'm doing because it's fucking ridiculous. And listen to me, if ladies ever hear this, cat print, it it's trashy. It signals that you have no class. Like, no class. You signal to the world, oh, look at me, I'm a trashy hoe. Okay? <laughs> I should do that on stage. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I should do that on stage. Look at me, I'm a trashy hoe. You know what I mean? Uh-uh-uh-uh-uh. Oh, 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 oh. Fuck, man, stop wearing this shit, like, no, somebody needs to tell these fucking women that it's, like, it's never been in style, and the the worst thing is, cat prints been in, women been wearing them since the fucking 70s, and they still haven't learned their lesson, you are a trashy hoe if you're wearing cat prints, you know what I mean, oh my god, if I do that on stage, I get, because I do a lot of uh, gigs in Liverpool, and I love Liverpool, okay, but there's always a few women with cat prints, always, 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 and uh, this is gonna be so funny when you have a girl on the first row, and I'm ranting for five minutes, I'm a trashy hoe, and... <laughs> And you know her friends, they're gonna be, they're gonna laugh so much after the gig. They'll be like, oh my god, did you see the way he was talking about women wearing cat prints? And she was like, yeah, because I'm a trashy hoe. But honestly, man, it's super tacky. It's ridiculous. It looks like 
I've never seen a woman wearing cat print and I'd be like, oh, that's classy, that's nice, that's elegant. No, it's like, it's tr- and it looks cheap, always looks cheap. You know what I mean? Gucci or money and I'm gonna come out with a full, I don't know, cat print skirt or whatever. They probably have, but you know what I mean? It, it just looks trashy, man. It's horrible. And she goes to fucking Congress or whatever the fuck they have over there in America, all wearing trash, all looking like a trash you know what I mean, lady wearing fucking sli- uh, shoes with cat prints and like these pyjama bottoms, <laughs> pyjama bottoms with cat prints and, well, every- and she looks like a crazy hippie bitch, you know what I mean, like she has that vibe where she doesn't know how to express emotion correctly, she laughs at, the, at an appropriate time, she had that look, she reminds me so much of one of my teachers, I think, I used to have that teacher, Back in the day, she used to be so fucking crazy, man. And she has the same vibe, like socially inappropriate. And she, she legit had some issues, like she was older and stuff. But yeah, and uh, she's just so bizarre and so ugh, just fucking weird, man. When I see her, it just gives me chills. And uh, some stuff about her husband, you'll find out later on what happened. But yeah, that bitch is fucking crazy. Let me see if I have something else on the notes. But it's so good, man. Oh, my God, the documentary is so good. Um, yeah, so her thing is... So her whole thing is she wants to end the captivity of wild cats. This is her life mission. She said it, you know, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I devote all my time and energy to pretty much sabotage and stop Joe Exotics, you know, park in existence. Hold on, I need to fill up my water here. I'm running low now because when I'm talking about this bitch, Carol Baskin, down there in Florida, I get very dehydrated, man. I'm wasting too much energy on that dumb bitch. Um, so what she does, she rescue, quote unquote, rescues them from... Uh, private ownership from circuses from uh if they escape from zoos and that type of stuff right but what she does which kind of perplexed me she does the exact same stuff as joe does like she has a park she doesn't like and because it's in america obviously you know their natural habitat is in africa and i think some parts of asia so she couldn't you know let them free but I was thinking, like, fucking, isn't there, like, a way, if you're so passionate about this, isn't there a way to transport them? I'm sure there's a way to transport tigers, like, a whole batch, get, like, 100 or whatever, like, a plane or a ship or something. And I'm sure that if you're so passionate, I'm 100% sure that the government's gonna help you. You know what I mean? Because they have organizations, that they have Department of, yeah, they have Department of Wildlife and Conservation. I'm sure if you talk to them and, you know, in your fucking park or whatever and you'll be like, I have 200 cats. Because she had a lot. She had like 100 plus or something. I have them. I'm sure they're going to find the finances or go fund me. The public will be behind you so they can transport them and they can release them into the wild, isn't it? But what she does, she keeps them in cages in a park that she's open down in Florida. And cages are actually, I think, smaller. And the park didn't look in that good. The the park was not in good shape, man. Honestly, like the the fucking uh, grass was all bushy. The cages were dirty and small. And the park was not that good. You know what I mean? She didn't care that much. Or at least Joe. Say whatever the fuck you want about Joe. But he loves cats. Like the guy's fucking obsessed. Well, the other lady, she says she loves them. But she doesn't spend that much time. And uh, she does the same. So she charges people to go inside to the park and do the same just look at cats and pet them and take pictures and all that stuff and i was like how the fuck are you the good guy in this situation you're so high on your you know ivory tower or whatever but you do the exactly the same stuff as joe there's no difference at least he's honest you know like i you know that he pets them and breeds them and makes money and all that stuff because i don't know what the fuck his deal is he's insane he's on meth or whatever (laughs) But I don't know, that, that really pissed me off. And, you know, she gives me the wrong vibe so I can fucking stand that bitch and that bitch cow baskets. And uh, I don't know, man, it's fucking crazy. Anyway, um, but the other thing is that I've noticed she is really good at social media. She has, like, that fucking legit following. I need to learn how she does it, honestly. She has, like, a website. They have, like, uh, they have almost two million and a half. Oh, the- 
sorry, and they had almost 2 million and a half uh, Facebook followers on their page, and I was like, fucking hell, and they had about 100k subscribers on YouTube or something like that, maybe even more, um, and she had like live streams and Instagram and all this stuff, and, and she's so bizarre, man, she starts all her broadcasts with, hey there, cool cats and kittens, like, it's kind of asking him from, what's the name, uh, Big Cat Rescue, and I was like, what the fuck, who the fuck talks like that, man, she's crazy, bro, and, um, yeah, and her husband, who is like the biggest wimp on the planet, he's like this millionaire and stuff, and something happens with him, you, you'll find later on, but, uh, the whole the whole show is about the beef between them and I don't know man it it pisses me off because like they're kind of the same they kind of the same thing but just different sides of the coin if that makes sense you know what I mean so they both have cats they both profit they both feed them and they both breed them you know what I mean so how come that she's the good guy and he's the bad guy and like, the people were on the side of Joe, I think everybody who watched the documentary, but the government is on the side of Carol, because, you know, Joe, they were doing this thing at the beginning where, to raise money, they were going across America in malls and were putting on shows, petting tigers and pictures and, you know, Joe explaining stuff, kids can play and make money, that's how they make a lot of money, but Carol, because, you know, they didn't like that, because they were claiming that um, because they were going with the bus, they didn't have money, so they put you know only baby tigers, like a few six, seven, I don't know, baby tigers in small space, and she said that's bad for them, which probably it is. I mean, I can you know probably it is in cages and stuff. And uh, she contacted the malls in order for them to cancel Joe. You know what I mean? And uh, this is how the war be began, and then they started posting in the newspapers. They talk shit about each other back and forth. Then Joe started doing the fucking, you know, the YouTube shows, and he was talking about Carol. He had like a sex doll, that those really bad inflatable ones, and he he dressed her up like Karen, <laughs> like Carol. Yeah, she should be named Karen, by the way. <laughs> like. <laughs> You know that meme, I want to talk to your manager. This is how she, she should be named. He dressed her, dressed her up like Carol and he started slapping her around and talking shit and pointing live snakes at her and it just went fucking crazy, man. And he got obsessed with her and this is the downfall of him and, you know, the drugs and personal life and the drama and the insanity and the drugs and the guns and all that type of shit. And it just started going down and he got obsessed. And I'm sure that he has some mental illness as well because, you know, like, he's very self-unaware and very self-aware at the same time. That, that that's why he's such a lovable character you know what I mean even though he is the bad guy and they kind of put you in like straight it's so insane because I, I saw this reference recently which I really liked I'm gonna repeat it um, you know in Breaking Bad Heisenberg Walter White you're not supposed to like him he is the bad guy and he eventually devolves into madness and you like him because from the beginning, and even though he devolves, you stick with him. And you're not supposed to, but in this documentary, the character is already developed. So they just, like, boom, in the middle. You're dropped literally in the middle of it. And you pretty quickly fall in love with this guy. And you're not supposed to. He's, he's bad. He's not a good guy, but you just can't help it. And he's such a meme as well. But Carol, I don't fucking... There's nothing likable about her. And she's so awkward and bizarre and stuff. Yeah, and but the government and the whole protection agencies and people, they were all on her side, which was kind of bizarre, not on the side of Joe. Anyway, so the third stable character in this, um, in this whole nonsense, crazy story is um, Myrtle Beach Safari, which is uh, located in South Carolina, and the owner is Bhagavan, yeah, Bhagavan Doc. Antho, and he changed his name to Bhagavan, which means Lord, and maybe some, he said in Buddhism or something, I'm not sure, uh, or Hinduism, and uh, he changed his name, Is this crazy white guy, because you know, when you hear Bhagavan, you're expecting, you know, like an Indian guy or something, but not this crazy white guy, he's like a cult leader pretty much, and he has that cult leader vibe, 
very charismatic in a weird way. Even I was falling for him, like, oh, yeah, so, yeah that sounds reasonable. You know what I mean? Because uh, later on in the show, you see he has like four or five wives and mistresses and keep people against their will and people work at tw for 20 years there and he has like four houses where his mistresses live and but he's so charming and you're like oh it sounds completely reasonable not paying your people you know staying for 20 years with you you know that type of stuff and i was like fucking that's crazy man he's insane though and um he has the zoo he pretty much does the same stuff as joe he breeds pets tigers he has a zoo where you can pay 339 for admi admission or 655 for admission and he said the cost of feeding a tiger for one year is 10k uh, which he said we feed them the finest meat and all that stuff and then the camera swoops a uh, kind of change jump jump cut to joe so saying mm, man, i can feed the tiger for three three k a year no problem uh, and he said that, you know, they do everything possible to keep the cost down. They slaughter cows themselves. They find, you know, dead meat on the side of the road. They f they go to fucking Walmart and Costco's and they have this thing where... Hold on. Oh, sorry. Fucking hell. Um, they have this thing where expired meat... They just throw it away and or they sell it at the back they said something like that for a like really 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 cheap price or meat that is about to expire and they go and they just buy like literally minivans worth of that shit and it's everything mince meat pork chops fucking uh chicken breasts uh every meat imaginable and I wouldn't be surprised if they feed them bologna and salami and that type of shit. And I think these animals, they only eat fucking meat. I didn't see them eat any vegetables. Maybe very rarely. But fucking hell, that's a lot. And that one of these tigers, they said, is like 400 pounds. Which I don't know how many kilograms is that. But that is insane amount of weight. You know what I mean? That's like a... Back in the day, the monster era of pro wrestlers, they used to be like three, four hundred pounds. That is insane, you know. And um, anyway, so they said that, you know, the I can feed them for less. And they had one of the most terrifying things I saw in this documentary is when they were chopping up, you know, like the, I think it was cows or something like that. Anyway, and the workers were dragging, you know, by the foot like this huge... Uh, cow thigh or whatever and you can see in a cage because i think this was the feeding time they probably got like 30 lions no 30 tigers and they were all like back and forth because they just saw the meat coming and they were all running back and forth back and forth and i was and they were like growling and stuff and they were stomping and i was like this is the scariest shit i've ever seen i was I was shaking, even though it's just a documentary and I know nothing can happen. I was like, fuck that, man. Are you crazy? And these people working for fucking no money and shit, risking their life every day. It's insane, bro. Honestly, it was so scary. And then they, they give, they switch to fucking our guy, Bhagavant, or whatever the fuck. Hold on, let me see what else I have on the note. Yeah, he is a cult leader, man. He has like this long, he's old now. He has like this really long uh, white hair, uh, soul patch, you know, this uh, soul patch, no beard. And um, he was handsome back in the day because they saw some pictures of him. He's been doing it for 25 years or something. He's probably in his 50s now. Uh, when he was like younger than me, he was very good looking. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, yeah, so they they do the show. They introduce him. The dude comes in a fucking elephant. You know what I mean? Because there was like, uh, oh, this is, uh, you know, and who comes now? Because you know they do these shows where they have somebody. I've been to a show like that in Spain. It was about birds, eagles, and stuff. It was on the top of a fucking mountain. Like a little mountain, I'm not even joking. It was somewhere in fucking Malaga or whatever. And it was very interesting, very interesting. And they have like these, uh, you know, people who speak. They do the presentations and the animals do their little tricks and stuff. I think, do, uh, I don't have any more videos. I think it was on my old phone. And uh, yeah, it was on my old phone. And uh, they had the lady presenting. 
big tits by the way i'm just saying all the women that he had all of them had massive tits because later on in the <laughs> documentary we found out that he, he made them all got tit surgery and changed their names which was fucking insane like how f- how much game that this fucking guy has in it like okay joe exotic can convert two guys two straight guys to marry him but if you can convert fucking five women to live with you for 20 years no pay by the way he's not paying them anything to call him bhagavant which means lord to get them to do all of them to get tit surgery and all of them to change their names some of the girls are fucking insane names later on in the episodes like fucking uh, crazy you know what i mean it's not even a name and how much fucking game you need to have to do that you know what i mean how fucking good looking and how much but is these tigers man does the appeal and it like I'll be honest with you, man. Like, if you, even when you're seeing Joe, fucking seeing Joe Exotic wrestling with tigers and just, just petting them, just playing with them like I play with a cat, fucking nothing, you'll be like, man, that, that's some manly shit, you know what I mean? Joe Exotic, I'm not joking, is like so fucking manly and so fucking bitchy and uh, eccentric at the same time, you know what I mean? It's insane. He's like, he's like uh, Freddie Mercury. That's why I love Freddie Mercury because he's like so macho. <clears throat> because you know on stage 100,000 people and you can have them in the palm of your hand and just prance around and be like super confident and alpha but yet he's like wearing these crazy outfits and being super bitchy in his interviews and super flamboyant and girly sometimes and that's like a weird combination which is fascinating and I think that's why Joe is such a interesting character and um so he comes in, um, yeah, he has game, bro. And I'll be honest with you, he was very charismatic in a dark way. And he has crazy eyes, by the way, like absolute crazy eyes. When when he's talking to the camera, you can see that this guy's a psychopath. You know what I mean? And every time he blinks, his eyes kind of flinch to the sides for a, just a f- brief moment. And you're like, oh, that's a fucking murderer right there. You know what I mean? That guy's done some crazy shit. And uh, he comes on a fucking airplane, uh, airplane, <laughs> yeah, on a elephant. And he was like, oh, and he's talking, like, oh, how you doing, guys? I'm here with my friend. Uh, he called the uh, the elephant, it was massive, bubbles, which is, I think, I think it was fucking adorable, honestly. Like, hey, me and my, my friend here, bubbles. And uh, then he shows a picture, which is very adorable, I'm not going to lie. When he was 20, I think, 22 or 23, good-looking guy, with that same tiger, uh, elephant. No, maybe, how long do elephants live, though? I don't know. But uh, Tiger is a baby, it's a newborn baby tiger, and everybody's like, oh, he's so cute. And I'm thinking, even because when I saw him the first episode, you kind of... I'm saying those stuff because in the later episodes you kind of understand what type of a scum this guy is. But at, at the beginning, everybody's portrayed except Carol. She's always crazy. But Joe and Doc and everybody is portrayed in a very nice way. So very likable. And you're like, oh, it's going to be such so much fun. But they all scum. Honestly, like they're all humans scum. Doc as well. Um, even though one thing I didn't like, I'll be honest with you. I was looking. Uh, he appeared in some comedians podcasts and i watched i watched him before i watched the documentary so i didn't know who he was and i was like oh that's a lovely guy he's so much fun he brought a monkey and blah 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 but then when i saw the documentary i was like it was coming and then i saw another comedians and everybody was so like they were not questioning him and i don't know man they didn't agree with him they were on on his bandwagon so hard and I was like, man, you're talking, this is not a nice guy that you're talking to right now. He's a manipulator. But in all honesty, if if Joe Exotic is out of jail, when people interview him, they're going to treat him like a god. I'm not joking. If he goes out of jail, or even if he's allowed to Zoom or Skype from jail, he will be on all the talk shows. He will be on all the podcasts, probably Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is going to ha- bro, if Joe Exotic gets out of jail, or is allowed to Zoom, Skype, or whatever, at the Joe Rogan podcast in the next few months, you know what I mean? Because, you know, it's gonna, in five years, nobody's gonna remember him. I mean, Joe Exotic, not Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is amazing, but he will be, he, it's gonna be one of the most watched podcast episodes, if not the most watched 
everybody will go fucking insane. I'll, I'll watch it, bro. Are you kidding me? And everybody will be nice to him. So, yeah, that being said, I mean, I kind of understand now why people are being nice to him. But he's insane, man. And he has crazy eyes. He was on the on the elephant, which is an alpha move. And that's it. But let me see. I think that's it. I don't have any more notes for this episode. Now, oh, hold on. I have so many notes. <laughs> Yeah, dragging dead cows, it's insane, man. Um, oh my god, so Joe is doing presentations. Hold on, ah, my fucking throat. <coughs> my fucking throat hurts. Um, so Joe was doing presentations back in the day, like 2004 or something. They were inviting him to schools to talk about, it's called PSAs. Uh, to be like, oh, don't do drugs, do this, don't do that, stay in school, that type of stuff. And he said that when he... He go just as him. Kids didn't pay attention. So what he did. He started bringing a pet tiger. To the PSAs. But he said that they still didn't pay that much attention. And I was thinking like. What type of a fucking kid. You know what I mean. Like it's a baby tiger motherfucker. What you, how much of a. Uh, was it. Um, ADHD do, uh, do these kids have. Like they cannot pay attention to a fucking baby tiger. Are you kidding me. And he's telling them don't do drugs. Because they make your teeth bad. Bad and you look ugly. And you have no friends. And that type of stuff. You know which is nice. I mean tell. You know don't do meth and stuff kids. You know tell them stuff like that. And I was like fucking hell. And then he was like. So then I started doing magic. And they just. Jump cut to him like off on stage and just doing the most preposterous shit ever and i was like are you fucking kidding me this guy music magic tigers shooting guns having fucking five husbands gift shops like the, can we agree that joe exotic is a national american treasure you know what i mean he is an absolute character he is the embodiment of a showman you know what i mean i had strives one day my goal is to be acknowledged as a showman but this fucking guy is putting out so much quality nonsense and content i think i will never be able to reach him uh not i don't have too many scandals to be honest with you to be crazy as him but um so yeah he was doing and they said they 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 showed this fucking kid 12 year old and he said i i taught him magic because he didn't know how to do it they showed this fucking fat kid <laughs> teaching him magic back in the day this is so funny oh he's an all around showman and he wore the glittery crazy outfits just to let you know how he got into wildcats which was really sad to be honest with you um because you know he said that i knew i was gay when i was 12 so when he came out to his father and you know oklahoma is in the south and and you know i think his family was not very happy about that his father said he made me shake his hand and promise him i will never attend his funeral which is fucking cold, man. Honestly, like, Jesus, man, how fucking... That's insane. Honestly, like, how can how can people like that still exist? I just don't get it. But in all fairness, like, he is, f- like... Oh, yeah, so Joe is 58 now. So he, if he came out... He was young. He said he came out when he was, like, 15 or 16 uh, or 20. Because he said he had an accident when he was seven, uh, 18 or 19. So... That was, what, like, 40 years ago? No, 30 years ago. In all fairness, I mean, 30 years ago, it was fucking... No, oh my God, I got my math wrong. What I'm trying to say is Joe Exotic's dad probably grew up... It was born probably in the 30s or 40s. You know, I'm not defending him, but I can't... And in Oklahoma, let's be honest, it's in the South. But still, that's not that's, that's not okay. Still, I'm saying like fucking hell, man. That that just and that's your own kid. You know what I mean? Just fucking. Even if you don't agree with that lifestyle, at least pretend that you do. Because what happened next? He said that he got into his car and he tried to commit suicide. And you know he drove off a cliff. Uh, and you know what I mean? Even if you don't agree, just just fucking pretend or something. You know what I mean? Because because like. You cannot, at, at that age, and your father, man, coming out and saying shit like that, it's it's fucking hor- horrendous. And, you know, he tried to kill himself, and he said that he, he didn't manage to, but he broke his spine and his neck and stuff. So he was in a cast for five years. Five years, and that's painful, man. I'm sure it's really painful. And then when he was in a rehabilitation, he went down to Florida, and 
at the center that he was there, his neighbor, he had wild cats as uh, he was in a circus or something. And he used to bring baby tigers to him when he was in bed and hospital and all that type of stuff. Or whatever. And, and you can see all those pictures of him when he was young with the babies. And all. Oh, that's so cute. And this is how he fell in love with the cats. And this is how he developed, you know, the whole thing about, oh, I want to open a zoo and all that stuff, you know. It's a very interesting story. But still, okay, don't be fucking douchebags. If your kids come out and say, I'm gay, just be happy for them, man. Because fucking hell, that's, that's insane. Uh, okay, so did the magic. I'm just checking my notes here. Um, yeah, and pretty much they just have an online. <laughs> they have an online war between Carol and Joe. He does the. He does a lot of memes. Uh, and he, <laughs> they showed he photoshopped Carol's face on a guy wearing a diaper, and it looks so fucking ridiculous. And he had, you know, the whole Facebook group he used to post there like crazy, and they show, like, a face of a... Like, this weird creature, like a... I don't know, like a worm or something, like, mm, really sad and slimy and shit. And Joe texted on top of it, like, a proper meme. He knows how to do memes, which is insane. I don't know if, he, if it's him or somebody from his staff, but fucking well done, those are good memes. And it says... Um, don't be sad because it can be it can be much worse. You can realize that you have a crotch like Carol Baskins, and below is that picture, assuming that that is the crotch. Or then then they showed like a horse with a massive dick, <laughs> and well, what is it like? Uh, like half human, half horse. Some some crazy like saying that that's Carol Baskins, and you can see her husband be like, oh yes, that is a horse dick. <laughs> It's fucking insane, man. This is the wildest show ever, and I'm gonna end the podcast here, yeah, because I want it to be an hour, but I got overboard, as usual. I'm gonna end it here, I'm gonna read the news, and I'm gonna do the multi-level marketing next uh, episode, and I'm gonna do a few more bits and pieces as well. But yeah, man, this is... Uh, listen, mate, go and fucking see the show, because it's absolutely outstanding. I don't know if I did justice, but I think I did pretty well for episode one. I'm not sure if I'm going to do more episodes because let's see what's going to happen, you know. I want you to go and see the show for yourself. I don't want to spoil everything, you know. But anyway, man, I hope that you're having a good time and I hope that you're keeping busy, active and that you got into a nice rhythm. I got into a pretty nice routine and rhythm now, you know, because the quarantine is still going. Weather is going good. I'm, I'm doing a bit of sunbathing and stuff, you know, and record podcasts, do some more, I started writing comedy again, mate, yeah, I'm very happy, I have a new bit, yes, I have a five minute new bit, I wrote in the last few days, I have a bunch of new material as well, and, you know, still just finding equipment, collect, uh, uh, collecting money, uh, yeah, I wish I collected money, just saving up money, slowly but surely for the equipment, and just working on the podcast, try to keep you people entertained and happy, also, Check my social media, okay? Follow me on Instagram at mechanic because I post daily uh, stories, which is memes, little games, videos, commentary, you know, try to keep it uh, very positive and funny. Uh, also on my Facebook page at Mikeyanik Show, I post a lot of stuff there. I post the podcast. Uh, the po- so you can listen to the podcast actually from Facebook because I upload the actual episodes as well besides Spotify, iTunes, Podbean, all those places. And I'm slowly building up my audience and I'm very happy with the progress that I'm making. And hopefully in a few weeks or months, uh, I will get the video stuff to you. Once I buy camera, by the way, I will start doing sketches. I will start doing... Uh, little commentary, uh, the long form podcast, little reaction videos. I will try to put out as much content as possible from Yeah Boy. And I'll hopefully try to record comedy uh, gigs that I do in a few months and stuff. So, yeah, let's see how that is going to work out. And thank you so much for listening. Enjoy the rest of your week. And I'll speak to you next week, mate. Okay. I love you. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Stay indoors, okay? Don't be fucking douchebag. And enjoy now the outro song of the Mike Yannick Show. This was the outro song of the Mike Yannick Show. Hope that you had a great time. I'll speak to you next week. Bye.